construction is is people. Um, it's you know hundreds of people uh, building, whether it was in the 1920s or in the 2011 when it was built. You've got people building, so it's incredibly important that the building process is managed and quality control is there. And Welcome to the Fine Home Building Pro Talk podcast, a regular discussion with building industry professionals. This is Senior Editor Patrick McComb. Today I'm joined by Chief Sales Officer Ali Cronbush and VP of Administration and General Counsel Tammy York. Both work for Reconstruction Experts, a construction company specializing in construction defects. You can find the Fine Home Building Pro Talk podcast and the original Fine Home Building podcast at finehomebuilding.com slash podcast. You can leave feedback and ask questions there too. Well, Ali and Tammy, thank you so much for being on the show. It is a pleasure to talk to you about your very interesting work. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to be here. So I went looking to see what you all do, and I went to your company's website, and it became clear you work on very big, difficult projects. Uh, You work with developers and homeowners associations to fix defects like bad roofs, bad exterior detailing and stucco. You do big projects and fancy hotels that are open for business. Can you please talk about your firm's work? Uh, It's a big company, right, with multiple offices. So, Patrick, I love that you've done your research. Thank you. (laughs) Um, Once your mind opens up to our world, you you actually you you go through your journey, which is you realize how large of a of a construction industry is, which is the reconstruction industry, um, and repairing occupied space buildings, and that's really where RE got our our start. Um, In uh, 2001, Reconstruction Experts began in uh, Colorado. Now we're currently in California, Colorado, Texas, and now Florida, uh, where there's a lot of occupied space. Uh, And how many employees? I'm sorry to interrupt you. Sure. You know, Tammy probably knows that number exactly because she oversees HR. (laughs) Yeah, we we have just over 300 employees. Wow. Okay. So Mm -hmm. we are a large, a larger construction company, um, but... You know, you bring up one of our focuses, Patrick, which is um, the construction defect uh, of you know uh, process, um, and that is one of our focuses as far as really what we do is we repair distressed buildings, um, and it, and it comes through three ways, and the one you mentioned is is through construction defect, which is when there is a building that is built and there's uh, damage occurring because of the defective construction, we come in and we support that property through the entire process. So we're expert witnesses. We help the engineers identify uh, components of the building they wanna see. And then ultimately we typically do the large scale reconstruction. So that's one component. Uh, The second component is uh, event driven items. So you can assume, right? Hail, uh, hurricanes, tornadoes, shoot when, you know, Mr. Smith backs into his garage, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) That That is distress caused by an event. Uh, and, and that's one component, the second component of our business. And the third is it's just capital improvement uh, when the property needs some love and a little bit of a facelift. Uh, so those are older properties. So we are the full service uh, uh, contractor that can help any property, big or small, that's in distress. Wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you both come to this kind of work? And were you at, at other firms before this? Tammy, you go first, please. Yeah, yeah. So um, I started learning about construction and construction law while I was still in law school. I got the opportunity to clerk for a a firm here in Denver that represented contractors. Um, We represented GCs and subs and small trades, as well as homeowners in construction defect litigation. So I was getting um, a view of, of both sides of construction law. I was getting Um, a view of construction disputes between the different trades and and homeowners, and also getting exposed to defect litigation. And then I went on to become a partner at a firm here in town um, where I was introduced to reconstruction experts. And um, again, still having that, that niche of getting to represent both contractors and homeowners and getting this unique view of construction law Um, and getting to see both sides of it. Um, And and that's what I loved about reconstruction experts when I was introduced to them. Um, I loved that uh, they were this leader in the industry and that they really were putting their their money where their mouth was and in doing the right thing. And so um, that's really just how I I became aware of of reconstruction experts and, and got my start in construction law. 
Before I ask you the same question, Allie, uh, one set, one other thing, Tammy, like, so what is your, uh, what is the legal wor- work you do now for the firm, for the company? Right, right. So I am um, our legal department of one. <laughs> so um, I do everything from negotiating our contracts to resolving trade partner disputes um, to overseeing any employee issues that we're having. So full range of things um, that I do as well as, you know, negotiate whatever contracts we're, we're dealing with and getting those drafted and making sure that um, we are in compliance with everything that we need to be in compliance with from a legal standpoint. Mm. How about you, Allie? How did you get into this crazy business? Oh, my goodness. Um, so mine goes way back to uh, I was born into construction. Uh, so I've, I've always been drawn to construction. I'm from a really itty bitty town in Conrad or in Montana called Conrad. Uh, it's pushing 2,000 people. Uh, my dad is a master electrician, uh, has been uh, part of and has owned a family business for 50 years. Uh, got a couple uncles as a general contractor. So truly, I I recognized um, the amazingness of construction early on as a child. As you you can you can actually see the work that you're doing. Um, you're out there. You're working. And and as I as I uh, you know grew up. Um, I realized construction is such a powerful force in our economy. Um, it drives so many jobs, um, truly drives our economy. So that's one component. I love construction. And then I was introduced to reconstruction experts through um, a property management firm. That's where I, my first job out of college was in property management, uh, which is now, as you know, uh, we service a lot of property managers throughout the mm-hmm. U.S. Uh, but really, that's the people component. Um Reconstruction Experts is an incredible business. I do 150 million uh, this year, right? We're projected to do. So the construction side, we got that covered. We're amazing at that. But what RE brings to the table is we truly care about the people. Um, and, and that's what drew me to the organization is, is we're incredible at it construction, but we we honestly, our core value is, is we care about the people within within the occupied space and then servicing uh, the buildings. So that's how that's how I was drawn to RE. I've been so here for the- years. <laughs> The, the folks who uh, listen to this show are mostly in, on the residential side, and I think they would tell you it's extremely stressful. I can only imagine it's crazy stressful with the millions of dollars involved in your projects and potentially hundreds of people, right? How do you deal with that? <laughs> I um, it is it is truly how we attract people, and it's I know culture is such a buzzword right now, um, but that's what honestly attracted me to the company is the culture, right. in that we look for people who have drive and energy and passion about what they're doing. And and they want to be a part of something that's truly changing how construction is seen in the industry. Um, And, and what you said is hundreds of people, right? I'll give you an example. We've got two high, two story high rises, 24 stories in Southern California. We're changing eight tons of cast iron piping uh, from the, from the buildings. Uh, We impact thousands of people's um, lives every day by doing that project. And, why we're different is, is the people that, that work for our organization literally and truly care about those people's experience. And, and really, it, it is crazy. Patrick, you're right. Um, but it's how you approach it. Um, you, you care for those people and that impact that, that you're creating from a construction project. So we embrace it. We lean into it. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Tammy? Like, what about, do you, are you lying awake at night worrying about some contract <laughs> provision you may or may not have thought about, right? No, no. I, and and I, I will second what, what, what Allie had just said. It is not easy what we do. Um, what we do is, I think, one of the most difficult types of construction because not only do you have the regular oversight that any other construction project has in that, you know, there's municipal oversight and in whatever inspectors are coming and looking at your project um, or engineers. Um, We have literally, uh, we are working in a (laughs) fishbowl of, of everyone who's still living there. Um, And they're likely not happy that their water is off or that their apartment is torn apart. Right. Exactly. And, and one of the things that, that, that if Allie didn't, didn't say this enough these people are going through something that's probably the most stressful and maybe the most difficult time of their lives um, in that their home is, is damaged in some way. And um, we really just try to come in and take more care and more communication with those people and really show them the way so that they can understand and see the path of how it's going to get better Mm -hmm. and how they're going to come to love their place again. And so 
it's it really does take a special type of person and, and those are the type of people that 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 do well in our company and and excel and we're fortunate to get to work with some great people um some wonderful um staff that that can really handle that type of stress i personally don't stay awake at night um because i know we have some great employees and great people that that can handle it that was a pretty smooth segue i gotta say there um <laughs> ali you're responsible for the sales team i'm guessing it's challenging for your salespeople to gain trust from building owners or hoas after they've had a bad experience with a contractor um you mentioned that's only part of the work you do but how do you build trust with someone who's been burned by a bad uh, construction project? Yep. Um, so, you know, you, you mentioned the sales and, and marketing team, right? This is, we carry the honor of being the first, typically the first interaction with the customer. Um, and and we, we carry that um, with very, a, a lot of seriousness, um, knowing that we can begin to shape that person's experience with not only RE, but truly the construction industry. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a big deal to us. And what we do is, is, is exactly what you just said, Patrick is, is, is we, we train our people um, and we, we hope to attract people that, that want to establish a relationship um, and want to be able to provide a solution uh, for the client in whatever situation it is. And, you know, our, our large pro projects always get the, get the light, but we do thousands and thousands of smaller projects. And really it's, you know, if you're doing the, the example I said, right, we're doing a $5 million cast iron replacement in Southern California. It's just as impactful if you're, you know, replacing the ceiling because there was a, a, a leak in your master bedroom ceiling. Um, so really every type of project, we want to establish trust with our with our sales and marketing uh, team and, and, and they take that very seriously. And then really um, it's the synergy between the teams. So we... One of our core values at RE is, is that we're driven to be the best. Um, and that's across the entire entire company. So sales and marketing gets the honor to, to, to introduce the client to that first. And then the synergy between the pre-construction teams and the insurance specialists, and then ultimately the production team, right? The project managers and the superintendents, they come to work every single day, truly believing that. And, and we're able to establish that trust, as you had mentioned, Patrick. So it's um, it's pretty special because uh, we all feel like we're we're a part of something really, really quite big here uh, at RE. <laughs> well, I, you know, part of my uh, snooping around your website was looking at positions open, right? And I couldn't help but notice you had several account manager positions open in three states. It must be very difficult to find people to do this work. Am I right about that? You know what, Patrick? I will. I will say it is is not. Well, we're in we're in an economy where there everybody needs people at this moment, yeah. right? Um, and you would think that with the complexities we deal with, it would be really hard to find someone who wants to work in that environment. But what we strive for at RE, and we feel like it's our responsibility as an organization, is to to find someone and show them the path of success that when you join our organization, we care deeply about you and we want to show you how to succeed. And that, you know, starts from training and before that recruiting, right? You say, is it hard to find a person? It's when we look at people for, for my team, it's, you know, we look for people with integrity and energy and drive. Um, it's okay if you don't have construction experience. It's quite frankly, great. We're just, we can train that. Um, we want to find people who want to be a part of something bigger. And you're right. We have a lot of positions only, uh, opening because quite frankly, we are growing so fast. Um, so that's how we find people through Tammy's amazing recruiting <laughs> efforts. <laughs> <laughs> Tammy, can you please talk about your uh, role as VP of administration? Uh, we talked a little bit about your role as general counsel, I'm betting there's a lot of administration you're doing, if I could guess, knowing yeah. how much goes into a simple residential project. Right, right. So um, our administration team is just amazing, and they truly are, and I, I tell them this all the time, and it, I believe it, they are the grease that keep the wheels going <laughs> in our company. Um, they they do so much behind the scenes that people don't see um, especially the public does not see, uh, they're, they're, they're keeping things together. Plus they are also, um, 
driving a lot of our culture here. Um, they, they're managing our offices. Um, they're making sure our employees are taken care of. Um, they're making sure that, that everyone has what they need in order to do their job. And so it's, it's, in, it's incredibly, I'm incredibly proud of, of what they do and for the little recognition that they get, because like Ali said, you know, the glamour is really in the large project and, and, and glitzy um, and shiny new. And it's, it's never in the done. back end, right? It's always the shiny baubles uh, on the building site, right? Right, right. But but truly, and, and I believe this with my heart, is is the people in the back office that are that are making sure that all of those things are are working together so that we can be productive, so that our our, our production staff can show up and and um, everything is, is coming together and they have all the tools that they need in order to do their job and execute well. So yeah, it, it's, it's a lot of work. They do an Im immense amount of work, um, but it's also so rewarding. We, we all, um, including all the way down to, to the lowest level administration staff, um, really take pride in what they're doing and, and love being a part of this bigger picture and this this um, bigger success. And, and that's one thing that we do celebrate that and we drive it down um, down down through the company is that when we have a success and we have a project that goes well, um, we celebrate that with everyone and everyone's included in it. So they they don't a lot get a lot of the public recognition recognition, but we do try to um, drive it down so that they are getting internal recognition. I've been waiting to ask you this question since we uh, agreed to, to, to do this together. And um, given the work you do, you two must drive around and look at buildings like any of us in the building industry do, right? Uh, do you like what you're seeing when you see new buildings <laughs> under construction? Are you, are you imagining the defects that are gonna be b lurking behind the walls? Yeah, that's that's a great question, Patrick. Um, it, and and both of us have different experiences. I have past experience doing defect litigation, and representing contractors. And so I do drive around and and look at things differently. And especially here in Denver, where we're located, it's booming, there's right? So a lot yeah. of construction going on. Um, and and growth and change are always going to happen, and it's unavoidable. And so there's a lot of new construction, which is fascinating. Um, but I don't look at it from a perspective of what's going to go wrong with the building. I'm looking at it from a perspective of what new technologies are they utilizing? How mm. are they staging their project? Um, how did they contract? Um, how did they get the city to, to buy into this idea? Um, and probably even more fascinating for me, because I love old architecture is seeing older buildings getting refreshed and renewed and seeing the love that's going into an older building. Um, and, and I just, I, I geek out over that kind of thing. So, <laughs> so not so much looking for, for bad things, but looking for, for the, the great things that are happening. What about you, Allie? Do you wonder like how you were going to build this thing? If it was, you know, your job, I'm sure you do. <laughs> You know what I, I, and you know, the world is um, interesting right now. There's been some, some recent tragedies uh, with, with buildings that have needed some care uh, in Florida. Um, you rewind, you know, six or seven years ago is in Berkeley, the, the balcony uh, collapse. And really what I, what I drive around thinking about um, Patrick is, is a, a platform to be able to communicate to the world that buildings, new or old, need care um, and need someone to, to look after them and the people within them. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm excited to, to join you guys today. You guys are thankfully giving us the voice to let everyone know. We know you guys have a great audience. Let everyone know that every type of building needs to be looked after um, on a regular maintenance schedule. Um, we have a roofing company, Advanced Roofing and Sheet Metal. We do a ton of roofing. Um, we always feel the roof the roof is is forgotten until it's too late. <laughs> right. Um, so I'm excited to be able to to talk to talk to the world about um, how Ari is here to to take care of your um, your maintenance plan for your buildings. So yeah, <laughs> and you're also looking at like efflorescence around scuppers and stuff too, aren't you? 
<laughs> it's, you're, you're, it's funny doing this for as long as I have. And your your mind, you, you always go to the building integrations, right? To similar materials. It's like, wait, how are those integrated? Who supervised that? You know, <laughs> construction is complex. Um, it's a it's a wild thing. <laughs> and so many people are involved. I think that that makes it even more complex. And unlike, you know, most manufactured things, there's a prototype, there's an evolutionary process into making it. Buildings are often a one-off, right? Yep. Yep. Well, and construction is, is people. Um, it's, you know, hundreds of people, uh, building, whether it was in the 1920s or in the 2011, when it was built, you've got people building. So it's incredibly important that the building process is managed and quality control is there. And that's one of the, our core pillars at RE is, is, is quality, quality control. We will be right back after this word from our sponsor. This episode of the Fine Home Building Pro Doc podcast is brought to you by Jobber. If you run a home service business like painting, contracting, lawn care, or cleaning, your to-do list is endless. From hiring staff to mountains of paperwork, not to mention doing the actual work that pays the bills, Jobber is a mobile and online app that helps you organize your business and look professional. With Jobber, you can quote jobs, schedule your crew, invoice, and get paid all in one place. Try it free today at jobber.com. So um, we were introduced because of Women in Construction Week. I got a press release introducing both of you, and I was pleased to get it because the work you do is extremely challenging and interesting. Um, Do you think being a woman in an overwhelmingly male-dominated industry makes the work even more difficult? Tammy, you go first. Sure. Um, Yeah, it it is a male-dominated industry, and... I think as a younger professional, that that can be intimidating. Um, but I have to say, in my experience, um, it's it's been really exceptional. And it's one of the things I love about working for reconstruction experts. Um, I've now been in-house for eight years, and I'm treated no differently than anyone else. And I am rewarded based on my work, and just like everyone else in this company. And I feel like... Um, also, since I, I oversee HR and our HR function, I am seeing more and more women apply. And I love seeing that um, because um, there are so many opportunities for women in this field. And I think that people are starting to realize um, we may not have been out swinging a hammer, um, but we are just as knowledgeable in this field and can do some great things. And, and what a perspective we add. Um, as women to to this industry, but um, I, it, it is challenging at times. But I've certainly not had that experience at, at Reconstruction Experts. It's it's been um, really great. Allie, what do you what do you think about this question? Oh gosh, it's a it's an interesting question, and I you know Patrick, I often get it um, asked because I you know I'm a woman in a in a large construction company. Yeah. And yeah, I think one, of, sorry to interrupt Allie, I think one of the things that, that Allie should point out, and she probably won't, mm-hmm. is that she is a testament to what a woman can do in this industry. She started out as a young sales associate at, at Reconstruction Experts from a very young age, and now she is a CSO. And so she's in the C-suite, and she is a testament to, to what you can do and, and how, how Reconstruction Experts promotes their women. Great. Thanks, Tam. Shoot. <laughs> no plug for you, Allie. Oh, my goodness. Um, no, Paris, no. Um, so women in construction is an opportunity um, to really talk about the amazing women that are part of our organization. Uh, I have, I have, you know, 20 examples. Um, you know, the, the woman leading our pre-construction division in Texas, I might add, right, which is even a little more, uh, a little more male, mm-hmm. if you will. Um, I've, you know, we've got an amazing crew of, of, of women here in, in Colorado uh, leading the, the sales charge. We've got a vice president that oversees Colorado, which is a very, very large branch. So the, the fact is, is that it, RE, is, as Tammy said, um, RE is, is a is a organization that celebrates performance um, and, and the can-do attitude. And it attracts people, and we we hope as an organization um, attracts a bunch of different people, men, women, uh, and and really, it's our responsibility as an organization to provide them a voice. Um, and I had a voice when I was 22 years old, right out of college. 
I sat in a room and still do, uh, of men, <laughs> uh, but I felt supported that RE uh, gave me a voice. And more importantly, my voice mattered, uh, that mm -hmm. if I'm at the table, I better have an opinion. Um, so it's, it's been an, an incredible journey and, uh, I truly thank, you know, our, our leadership, Rich Whitten, our CEO and our founder, Drew Anderson for providing, uh, an environment for everyone to, uh, to succeed. Have you had challenging situations with men behaving badly, either of you mansplaining, whatever? Um, <laughs> and, and what do you do? I mean, like, what do you do? Yeah, <laughs> I, um. <laughs> I mean, shoot, in every, every, in the whole world, right? There's always man's point, right? <laughs> um, I'm sorry, but yeah. <laughs> but, um, which I, hey, open your ears, right? Maybe there's, there's some valuable information there. Um, but, you know, really what I, I think is important for, for women to understand who are, who are considering to enter the construction industry is do not arrive with a preconceived notion of, of how, how you are perceived. Um, go in, know your voice matters. And what I found at RE is, is that, you know, when I, when I have an opinion and I feel strongly about an opinion, um, the people within the organization react very positively to that. Um, so I can't point out that I've had a bad situation. Um, but hey, uh, I know that a lot of women in construction have, but RE is a different place. Um, so that, that, that's my view. <laughs> what about you, Tammy? Yeah, I mean, um, I think we getting to this level, we've all had some bad experiences. I can say, and the thing that gives me a lot of hope about, about the future and, and the next generation of women that are entering the industry is that it's getting better. Mm. Uh, it is it is so much better than it was, and, and, and I'm going to date myself here. I've, I've been um, in, in the law for 20 years now, and... Um, it is so much better. And I, I'm i not always the only woman in the room now. Um, there, there are more and more women in the room. And um, I do believe that even men are, are better than they used to be. And so I have a lot of hope for the future. And I think the next generation of women in, entering into the industry are only going to see more and more success and it's it's going to get better, and it, it already is. We're seeing we're seeing a lot of a lot of improvement um, just in the last few years, and um, that really excites me. It excites me for this this younger generation, and it excites me to see what what they're going to be able to do. It ex it should excite anyone who's in the industry. We, we need some fresh blood and fresh perspective. Yes. I, I think you'd agree. Absolutely. Yes. I'll ask you both, why do you think we have so many bad buildings out there? Ali, you alluded to the disaster in Florida, which, you know, killed dozens of people. Uh, that's not supposed to happen in this country. Um, what the heck's going on? Millennium Tower, yeah. uh, for folks who don't know, uh, that's a huge high-rise development in the Bay Area that's been, like, shifting since it was built. It's leaning out of plumb measurably. Tammy, how many lawyers are involved in that freaking yeah. disaster, right? Dozens, dozens. Um, it, you know, both of those things are just tragedies. And no one likes to see those things happen. And, and I mentioned this before, we're talking about people's homes. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, you know, in, in Florida, where people lost their lives, not just their homes. And they're, they're the things that, all of us hold the nearest and dearest and, and probably the biggest investment of our lives. And so no one wants to see anything bad happen um, to a building or to someone's home, but it does happen, right? Um, unfortunately, mistakes get made. Um, construction is imperfect process. It's not an exact science. It's rushed. It, uh... it, and, it's, and it can be very rushed and there's a lot of pressure um, to rush things. And, you know, that's, that's where we can come in and we can help, whether it's retrofitting an older building that needs the, the structural support, um, or it's fixing something that was built maybe a little too quickly and not quite correctly. And so, and so, you know, that's, that's a wonderful thing to be a part of is something that, that can go in and fix these homes because they are, they're people's homes. They're, they're salacious headlines, 
but these are people's homes. And it's so important for us to um, help those people and show them a way, um, a path that they can understand on how to fix it and hopefully gain the trust so that they'll be comfortable in their homes again. Hallie, if you worked, you know, every day on fixing Florida condos, I don't think you could make a dent. There are I agree. thousands of these things. Like what, what are we going to do about that? Who's going to pay for it? Yeah. Uh, for folks who are unfamiliar, it, the uh, collapse in Florida, there are many similarly constructed condos and they were all built about the same time with minimal oversight or poor oversight. What are we going to do about this, Hallie? So I think it's important to, to lead with is what Tammy said is that when there is a there is a building uh, that is not acting correctly, right? It's leaking, whether it's new or old. Um, the, the original intent was definitely not that, um, but we we understand how it happens, and and really how we combat that, Patrick, is through our through our planning process. Um, we we know that a project's success begins with a plan. And that is something that our operations and production and pre-construction teams truly believe. So, you know, you ask, gosh, what are the, all these condos going to do that are, you know, either going through construction defect or have had Hurricane Irma, for instance, come through and rip their roof and, and their windows off, you know, and are not operating properly. And what I, what I strongly want to get out into the world is, is make sure that you are partnering with a contractor who can show you how they take you through the entire process um, and how they will plan your project properly. Because if there are, you know, if there's any concern about the actual plan, that's where the red flags begin. That if, if you know, the contractor hasn't contemplated where to park the, or park the crane, right? That's where mistakes happen. Um, and again, it's not malicious, right? Construction is fast and it's complex. Uh, and that's really that's what really makes RE different is 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 we make sure to take the time to understand the complexity of uh, complexities of a project. We have the right people planning it, um, and and then ultimately we're able to provide the solution to the to the property. So my suggestion is slow down. Uh, <laughs> slow down. <laughs> I, th I think you'd agree that like you know, when you're negotiating with an HOA who's trying to fix their condo and maybe the, the maintenance been, has been put off for decades, yeah. uh, boy, all of a sudden they only see dollar signs. How the right. heck do you get them to see the value in a plan that's harder to put numbers with, right? Right. So the, I think one of the most amazing things that when, when we're talking about HOAs, right, and not commercial properties, is that, that these board members, they're volunteers, they are, this is literally their volunteer time, right? They're not getting paid like we are. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think what you can do to, to be able to, to bring these, these wonderful volunteers up to speed is, is explain to them um, and read the room and, and explain to them why it's really important to waterproof your structural garage. Um, and this is how we're going to do it. And this is why it costs this much. And this is the longevity it'll give your building and the reassurances that it's a safe structure. So I think honestly, Patrick, just sit down with people, talk to people, care more about these people. Um, and, and they will, they will come, they will come along. I've seen it a million times and they actually appreciate it. <laughs> well, I think, you know, everyone has the, uh, good outcome, uh, in, is in their interest, right? It's like, everyone wants this to work. That's right. Yep. You got to build that trust. Like you said earlier, mm -hmm. you got to build that trust. Mm -hmm. So Tammy, do you like working on your, your own house? Is, is this something that you do in your spare time? Do you have any problems you're yeah, fessing, so, not fessing up to? No. Um, interestingly enough, um, I just moved into a new community that's actually still under construction. <laughs> um, so I don't have any home improvement projects of my own. But I get to watch an active construction project daily. <laughs> is it interesting or it. is it noisy and a drag? It, it is noisy. It's messy. Yeah. Um, You've got mud all over your street all the time, right? It's oftentimes crowded. Yeah. Um, and, um, but it's fascinating. Um, it, is, it is interesting to see. And I have this unique perspective. Um, I understand what they're going through in, in trying to manage a large project where people are also living in winter. Uh, 
in, in, in the winter and, and in Denver. <laughs> yeah, and you know this this week it's freezing temperatures. It's it was zero degrees when I woke up this morning, and last week it was you know sixty, and so it was mud. Um, and so they're dealing with a lot of things that we deal with. And I, I have this perspective and this understanding and maybe even empathy for what they're going through. And but it is it is fascinating to watch. I do love watching the construction. I love the staging. I love seeing how they're getting their trades in and out and how they're sequencing. Um, so it's it's fun to watch. And I, I have a unique perspective on it. I'm guessing you're watching like how they detail everything because I'm guessing you think that your house is, you know, built similarly, right? Yeah. 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 So um, I probably asked more questions than your average home buyer <laughs> <laughs> during the construction <laughs> process. Um, and the, the construction team that I worked with uh, quickly picked up that I was not your average home buyer. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I'm looking at the details. I'm looking at the through wall penetrations and the flashing details. And um, I'm wanting to understand what materials we were using, um, making sure that it's in line with what I know is a good material to use. Mm -hmm. And so um, certainly I, I, I am watching it a little more closely and intently than, than others. Sure. How about you, Al? You said you grew up, you're, you're, with dad was an electrical contractor, right? Yeah. Did he make you help him uh, on jobs and stuff? Did you want to? Uh, did I want to? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, did, did I tag along? Absolutely. Um, so I, I think construction is so absolutely intriguing um, in this, just the crazy complexity of the management of trades. Um, and with those trades are people. Right. You're yeah. managing people, you're managing roofers, electricians, uh, painters, some folks who are uh, less enthusiastic about being managed. I might offer. <laughs> That's true. That is true. It's very true. I, uh, I, so, you know, you ask like, what about your home? And I, I ironically, I just had a water damage in my home. <laughs> a pipe? So it's, it's both a, a, both a blessing and a curse for, for me to be involved because <laughs> I, number one, I, I understand how crazy it is to work within occupied space sure. uh, for the, the contractors that are helping us. Um, and, you know, and then secondly, I, I know what it takes to, to be able to get it done correctly. Um, and the challenges that come with that. So I, I just always find it to be very interesting um, in the company in how it approaches in working in occupied uh, environments. And really that's, hopefully you've heard through our entire messaging here on the, on the podcast that. Um, <laughs> You're going to get a star from the PR rep that yeah, put me right, in touch with right. you, right? It's because uh, <laughs> we truly believe it. It's, it's those people that work in your company and how much they care about what they're doing. So um, luckily, the, the people who are repairing my basement really care. <laughs> so what happened? Did you have uh, a crack in your foundation or a broken pipe? What happened? Good question. I actually had a crack in my sewer line. So oh, that man. was really interesting. Add that component yeah. to it. <laughs> yeah. So it must so, be an older home? You know, it actually, um, it was built in 2001. So, mm. um, you know, older-ish. Um, but yeah, it, uh, we, we were surprised on uh, Thanksgiving Eve. Uh, to find some interesting stuff in the basement. <laughs> oh my gosh. Of course it happens then, right? Of course. And you know what's <laughs> funny is you don't, and it's going to happen to everybody um, as a homeowner or a renter, something's going to happen in your building um, and, and your home. And it's, you know, as soon as you interact with that process, you can empathize how crazy it is um, and how impactful at that moment in your life. Holy cow. How am I going to manage these 14 guys to be able to come in and get rid of this and take care of this? So, um, I don't know. It's always, it's always, how do really we even fun. find someone to even come look at it the day before Thanksgiving? You know, that's like, well, I work for well, a very large scale yeah. reconstruction company. She knows some yeah. people. <laughs> you know, some people. <laughs> I've got a few connections. <laughs> Luckily, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, you know, you're true friends when you have a septic line of failure, right? That is right. That is right. <laughs> oh man. Uh, um, it's been a pleasure having you on the show, both of you. Uh, Tammy, is there anything you want to ask or tell our audience before we part company? Um, we, we talked about our growth um, of the company, and, and we are So you're looking company. for folks. And we are looking for folks. And so that is one thing that we, we want to get out there, that um, anyone who wants to you know, be part of a team and enjoy the journey while they're doing it, 
um, should go to our web our website and go to the careers page. That's um, reconexp.com. Go to the careers page. You can just apply from there. It's just a simple click. Um, we are looking for all kinds of good people in all of our regions. And like Ali said, we're in four states right now. We're in California, Texas, Florida, and Colorado. And we are hiring in all regions. Mm. How about you, Allie? Anything you want to ask or share with our uh, audience before we go? Sure. You know what? I'll add to add to Tammy's um, pitch to, to invite people to our organization, which is if you have construction experience, we love it. If you don't have construction experience, we love it as well. So if you're just a, a person who wants to be a part of something pretty incredible, call us, join us, um, and, and we'd love to sit down with you. Well, it has been a pleasure talking to both of you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Patrick. Really so appreciate much fun. it. Thank you, guys. <laughs> it was great. Well, unfortunately, that is all the time we have for today. Thanks to Ali and Tammy for joining us, and thanks to all of you for listening. Please remember to send us your comments, questions, and suggestions to fhbpodcast at taunton.com. And please like, comment, or review us however you're listening. It helps other folks find our podcast. Stay safe, everybody. Keep Craft Alive. Happy building. <laughs>